Hey, Tom here from The Run Testers with our monthly roundup video where we talk about some of the kit that we've tested over the past month that we rate. And this tends to be kit that we don't normally cover in a lot of videos, so it gives us a chance to talk about the things that we've really liked over the past month that we haven't had an opportunity to tell you guys about. So let's jump in and see what the picks are for this month. So my first piece of kit that I want to flag up this month is uh, compression boots uh, and, and specifically the Therabody uh, Recovery Air Jet Boots. Now compression boots are essentially just you know long sleeves that fit over your legs and they fill with air to give you like a little massage and it's you know done in a very scientific way to basically promote recovery in between hard runs. And I've been a bit of a skeptic about these because they're very expensive but I've been writing a feature for one of the places I work for this month and I tried out a few of the boots and to be honest yeah I've really enjoyed using them. It's uh, They are very expensive but they do seem to work like so I've been marathon training lately doing more mileage than usual lots of hard runs and using these boots in between them has really kind of helped me recover and sometimes it's actually pretty amazing how much better your legs feel after using them uh, so the therabody are the ones that I prefer out of the you know the various sets I've tested mainly because they are completely wireless so they're very portable you don't have to connect them up to something to drive the kind of compression um, they've got a 240 minute battery life so that's very handy there's a console on each boot so you can adjust the pressure and the um, time you want to have the massage for so it's all very convenient very easy to use just slip them on they also pair with a partner app but i've not bothered to use that very much at all so yeah they're obviously absurdly expensive they're 799 pounds or 899 dollars so and it's not at all a necessary thing to have in your life as a runner but if you've got the money um, and you're interested in them i will say that having used them i've been pretty impressed and actually they do seem to make a bit of a difference when you are training very hard the only thing is if you live in a hot country i probably wouldn't get them because when we had our mini heat wave here in the uk and it hit like 40 degrees it was not very comfortable at all to have those boots on your legs for long periods so that's something else to consider with them Next up, I'll talk about the Garmin HRM Pro Plus, the new top of the range heart rate monitor. It's waterproof, it's great for swimming, it tracks all kinds of advanced running stats like ground contact time, vertical oscillation, um, it will measure running power, and it will beam it now natively to many Garmin watches instead of having to use a Connect IQ app. And it also has a couple of new uh, metrics that weren't on the original Garmin HRM Pro, which is running pace and distance if you're running indoors. On the software side of things, you're gonna get all of that on the existing Garmin HRM Pro. So there's no real software upgrade with the new heart rate monitor here, but there is a very notable hardware upgrade, which is on the previous version, the HRM Pro, to, to change the battery, you had to unscrew it. Uh, there's little screws, four little screws, which was a massive faff because you know finding a screwdriver of that size was never easy for me. Um, and also it was quite easy to damage the battery port on the HRM Pro. And eventually I did after two battery changes, mine kind of stopped working. So the new Pro Plus, you know, just fixes that by getting rid of that, that little screw system. You just take off this plastic covering and then there's a twist lock to open up the battery compartment where you can change the, you know, the little watch style battery uh, without risking damaging the straps. So it's a small but significant improvement on the previous edition. And like I say, getting all those great running stats is a really fantastic heart rate monitor, very accurate as well in all my testing. You know, you don't need to spend 120 pounds on a heart rate monitor, which is what this costs or $129, but, it is a great way to get all those things in one place with a Garmin device. So you've got your running stats, you've got running power, you've got heart rate in a very comfortable strap that uh, lasts a long time, you know, one battery, and then now you can change it much more easily as well. And the last thing I'll flag up is a very, very small thing, but it's a real example of how finding something that's perfect for you can really change your experience as a runner. And it's this Montane Soft Flask, uh, which is crucially 360 milliliters in, um, in size, in the capacity it takes, which is 12 fluid ounces, it says here. I don't know anything about fluid ounces. Um, anyway, uh, as some viewers of the channel will know, I carry my own Morton drinks during marathons and I you know, have them in a running belt because I just really like that drink and it's always helped me perform really well. And usually I use 250 milliliter soft flasks, which are fine. Uh, 500 milliliters is basically too big. So I can use that for training runs, but if I'm gonna run hard in a marathon, a 500 milliliter flask will bounce around too much. Now this is the Goldilocks size, it turns out. I've done a couple of hard runs carrying two of these flasks and there's just no bouncing at all. So. This is now the flask of choice for the marathons I'm gonna be doing going forward. And it's, you know, it's a very small thing. You can probably find other soft flasks of this size, in which case go get them as well. But yeah, it's a key size for me. H sits in the running belt, doesn't bounce, can carry a lot of fluid. 
you know, it's going to be an upgrade in terms of efficiency compared to carrying, you know, more 250 milliliter flask, which is what I was doing before. It's also got a nice wide opening, um, which is great, you know, for filling it up and cleaning it. And then the anti-leak valve has been very reliable in my testing so far. So yeah, that's the Montaigne soft flask, 360 milliliters. It's 13 pounds, $20, very small thing, but if you're carrying your own drinks and running fast, it's a really good size, I found. <laughs> So my first pick this month is the Melon Pace Hydro Cap. That's the cap that I've got on now instead of my normal run testers cap. Now this cap is pretty expensive. It's 50 pounds, which is a lot of money for a running cap, but it's a very good running cap. I've been using this quite a lot over the past two weeks and it has been very hot. We've had our heat wave in the UK. I've been sweating a lot and this cap has been fantastic for the heat wave. Now, as well as just being a, a good general running cap, it does have some features in it that do are designed to make it a little bit easier to go running. The best one of those, which I found, is there is sort of rubber design that sits under the rim so that when you sweat, it funnels the sweat and moisture out from the front of the head. So instead of it dripping over your face, it sort of drips down the sides, which I found works pretty well. Uh, I've not had any issues when running with this in the heat where it's been dripping into my face. So that looks pretty positive. Um, I would also just say that it is a very comfortable cap. I really like it. It looks a little bit more like a conventional style cap. I like to have running caps that I can use as well as when I'm running. So I'd be happy to wear this walking around town, whereas some of my other running caps probably wouldn't wear them um, outside of a run because they look a bit odd. Uh, so I think it's a very comfortable and good looking running cap. I'm, I've been using it pretty much exclusively recently for all of my runs. There is some technology in it, which is apparently is meant to lower temperature. I'm a little bit skeptical about that. I definitely haven't found it feels like it's lowering the temperature, but I do like that funnel system that takes the water away from your head. It's also made with a water resistant exterior, which I presume is designed so that it doesn't soak in all the water all the time. So if you're just going out for a quick run and you're sweating a bit, it's not gonna seep in, in straight away. Um, haven't really noticed a major difference from that. But what I do like about it is that it's really packable. So it's quite easy to sort of scrunch up and it retains its shape. It's also machine washable, which is a really big thing if you wear a running cap a lot, um, as I do, um, because sometimes if they're not washable, they can get a little bit disgusting um, after a while. 50 pounds is very expensive for a running cap though. So it's probably one that you might wanna buy if you really want to invest a lot of money in a running cap. I do think it's a very good running cap, but 50 pounds might be a lot. So unless you're really into your caps and you want these nice little features, then it might just be a little bit too much. My next pick is the New Balance London Edition Q Speed Jacket T-shirt. Now, New Balance, I'd probably say New Balance make my favorite T-shirts in running because, mainly because of the fit. So I'm quite heavy up top um, and what I like with a, a, a t-shirt is something that's a little bit tighter over the arms and the shoulders and the chest but gives me a little bit more of a relaxed feel around the midriff and I always find with New Balance t-shirts that that's sort of where they're designed. I do get uh, a lot of t-shirts that I try out that are either really tight all over or they're really baggy. I don't really like either of those. I think the fit with New Balance works really well for somebody with my body type um, but the other thing about this t-shirt is that it's really breathable so um, it's got a lot of perforated holes all the way through it. I've used this for some speed sessions this week and some interval sessions, and I've just found it to be a really comfortable top. The material is quite loose and light. It's quite soft against the skin, which you don't often get with performance t-shirts. Um, but those perforations as well seem to make the airflow work quite well. It's still very hot in the UK now, and I'm more than happy to wear this top, even though it's black. I don't know why black tops when it's, when it's sunny out, but um, I'm very much enjoying this t-shirt. And I just think with New Balance, I've got New Balance t-shirts that I've had for years, and they still fit me perfectly. They never sort of lose their shape over time. And I like the understated black colorway, whereas Mike might like something that's multicolored. Um, but I prefer something black and something a little bit more subtle. But I really like this t-shirt, I just think it fits perfectly and um, just feels really nice. Okay, so my third pick this month, uh, I've been doing a lot of sunglasses testing recently. And this is one of the, the sunglasses that has stood out for me. This is the uh, Bolle Icarus. Um, well, they're not actually running sunglasses, they're multi-sport sunglasses, but I've been using them for running, obviously, and they've been absolutely fantastic. I'm not really a big fan, or I wasn't a big fan of visor type sunglasses. I normally like to wear Wayfarer types that I can use to go to the pub in and stuff like that. But these ones are, they're just, 
fit the head really nicely. They're very comfortable. They've got this thermo grip um, covering on the arms uh, and I've had no issues with slippage or them falling down my face or anything like that. Like that. And also they look quite nice as well. They're um, As visors go, they're a little bit more subtle than some of the ones that I've seen Nick wearing. The other thing about these glasses as well is they come in different lens versions uh, with the cheapest coming in at 115 pounds. So that version is just sort of your standard sunglasses that give you UV protection, but you also get other versions as well. So there is a uh, Volt Plus polarized version, that's these ones, and that gives you, I'm gonna have to read my notes here, 30% uh, color enhancement, so you've got a better vision of what you're looking at, more depth perception, um, and uh, high performance polarization. Now, I don't entirely know what all of those things mean, but what I have found with these glasses is that, in comparison to some of the other sunglasses I wear, where the, your vision sort of changes a bit when wearing them and it's, it doesn't quite feel right. I've not noticed it with these. I, I, I've not minded running in these in the sun and the heat. So they're a bit of a thumbs up for me for that. There's also another version as well, which is the Phantom version. Now the Phantom version has photochromic lenses, um, better clarity, uh, optical clarity, uh, anti-fog, uh, and a high impact resistance for the frames. So, uh, that, but that goes up to about 185 pounds for those ones. These ones are 165 pounds. So all in all, just a solid pair of great shades for running in that don't cause any problems. I also, uh, if I did a bit of a search online and you can find these quite a lot cheaper. So they're 115 pounds on the Bolle site, but I think if you look at places like Wiggle, you can find them considerably cheaper. Um, but I think they're a great option if you just want some solid, good sunglasses um, that stay on your head when you're running. Hi runners, I'm Laura and these are my two picks for July. Now one, relevant to every runner I think, one, not so much, quite a niche product, but bear with me. So first up, a pair of socks. Uh, these are Beleaga Enduro women's running socks, no show. Um, and they're really nice. Now, I have been a bit swayed by this because I am usually a cheap socks person. I'll buy multi-packs of um, very cheap socks and don't tend to have many issues. But I've put these on um, for running for a few weeks now and I will root through uh, the drawer to find these specifically if they are clean because they just feel really nice. They The material's nice and thick. Um, which even though it's been very hot, hasn't hasn't made my feet hot and sweaty. Um, they feel nice. Just putting them on, on your feet and walking around, you're like, oh, this is this is nice. So if you're a runner that likes a, like a bit of comfort, if you like um, cushioned running shoes, things like that, a bit of a plush feel, then um, I do think if you've got the, if you've got the extra bit of cash to, to spend, then that's a good one. Uh, I think good socks are a nice present, you know, people that you don't necessarily know what to get, get them a nice pair of socks. So these are £14. Yeah, obviously not, not, not cheap, but they are nice. Um, they are a women's specific fit. Now we've seen this a bit with shoes this year. That's very much um, a trend with Lululemon, Adidas, Under Armour, bringing out those women's specific shoes, going back to, oh, can we look at women's um, foot shape and how that's different and deliver something specifically for them. We've got it in socks too. So I can't tell you much about whether they are more suited to my foot than a gender neutral sock but they fit nicely and they feel very nice second up a bit more niche not everyone will need it but if you do need it you will be quite excited about this product if you've got long curly hair there's a cap specifically for you now so like me um Probably you tie your hair up on the top of your head in a ponytail or a bum when you go running. Obviously you could use a, a visor, uh, probably you are, but now there's another option. It's kind of not quite visor, not quite cap. Uh, it's a cap for curly hair. So what's different about it? If you have curly hair, you'll know this. Um, materials that are a bit rougher, 
uh, cause friction, causes frizz. So you might put your hair up in like a satin wrap to go to sleep at night. You might have a satin pillowcase to reduce frizz. Now this cap has got that on the inside. Yeah, so hopefully as you run, you're gonna reduce the amount of frizz that you get. Why would you use a ca this cap instead of a visor? I know that when I run in the visor, if it's particularly humid or drizzly or anything like that, the front bit of your head is quite visible. So this bit kind of frizzes up quite quite dramatically um, on my head anyway. So although I'm not necessarily that bothered about it, um, here, obviously that bit's covered. So there you go, but you've got a nice amount of space at the back for your ponytail or however you choose to wear your hair up. Uh, it's £16, which I think is pretty reasonable for a, a cap or um, visor. The good thing about it is that it doesn't scream uh, running cap because it's not, not necessarily just a running cap. Um, you can run in it, I've run in it, but it's something that you can use every day as well. I quite like the um, the non runny feel to it. There you go, a little tiny bit of branding. This is OC for Only Curls, which is the brand behind it. They mainly make um, shampoos and products like that, but they pulled out a cap. So, well, for me, um, obviously you've got that bit of coverage. So when it is really hot, you don't get the same ventilation um, as you might do if you had a full-on visor um, but for general running running in winter running uh, in kind of drizzle or milder days I think it's a, a good a good option so that's it from us this month in the monthly roundup thanks a lot for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon and don't forget to check out the new podcast that we have our monthly podcast comes out at the end of every month if you go down to the caption below you can find the link to listen to this month's podcast and don't forget to give us a follow on the podcast provider that you use thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time